What's up guys and welcome back to a brand new Neo Vintage review. This is basically a review show where we take a random game, console, and give you guys our in-depth thoughts on what our experience with, has been with them. And today we're going to take a look at Nintendo's new Game & Watch system, uh, styled all around Ball and Super Mario Brothers. Uh, for the anniversary and I'm really really excited to talk about this. Uh, this video is actually a little bit delayed I actually meant to get this video out about a week and a half or so But I ended up at wanting to take a break for the holidays. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving uh, So we're back in business here uh, To you know talk about this and if before we get started into the review if you enjoy retro cont uh, content content Every Saturday or so, you know, every other week, we have a retro news show that I think you guys will really, really enjoy that's going to go up at the same time as this video, so keep your eyes out for that. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. So first off, let's just actually take a look at the console. Uh, first, we have the box here that it comes with. Really great packaging, and the cool thing is it has this really cool sleeve that they put over it that kind of fills in and it has kind of like Mario decals and stuff on it, so that's really, really awesome. Uh, and then we have the console itself. So here's the front of it. It's a tiny little thing. In the hands, it feels like something. Again, uh, if, if you've played a game and watched, from what I understand, it's a very faithful uh, kind of recreation of that. I unfortunately don't have an original game and watch, so I don't have really anything to kind of compare it against. But uh, for me in the hand, the immediate kind of response my brain registered it as is something similar to like maybe a Game Boy Micro, uh, for example. But yeah, man, this thing is a really, really awesome little console that they put here. And I didn't actually really know what to think. I wasn't sure what the build quality is going to be like. But as usual, I mean, Nintendo has a really well-built console here. It's way sturdier than I imagined it's going to be. A great D-pad that they have here. Again, the Nintendo D-pad, you can't go wrong with it. So I really, really enjoy that. Uh, the buttons are a little bit mushier than um, what I anticipated. It's not the super tactile kind of clicky buttons that they use. But yeah, everything else, really, really solid. Beautiful screen here. Um, at this size and resolution, the pixels just look absolutely amazing. The moment I was playing this, the, I, I was like, I immediately wanted to play some of those Game, Game Boy Advance, like Castlevania games, for example, is what I really want to see on this thing. Uh, but yeah, the, the screen is really, really solid, really, really bright, beautiful. Uh, I, I'm really, really happy with that. Um, the interesting thing is that the aspect ratio is a little bit off for me it's not the traditional aspect ratio you see on the handhelds or anything like that uh it's something closer to maybe like a tv aspect ratio it, it's it's kind of weird um but other than that yeah no really really solid a uh, little build here so let's get into uh what you get in this so this thing is 50 dollars here uh they seem to have produced a decent amount of stock on it so you shouldn't have a big problem actually getting one of these a lot of people had a lot of concerns about getting these because i guess it's going to have that weird nintendo vault thing where they're only going to produce it to i guess like marchish or something like that and then they go away i don't know i hate that they're doing that uh but this i think just like the mario 3d collection is going to fall into that kind of group where it's going to go around go away in March. Uh, so people were concerned like, oh man, am I going to even be able to get my hands on one of these? But from what I see, it, it, it's the time that's more the issue, not so much the quantity that's produced within that time. These are all over the place. I've, I've seen pictures of people showing stacks of them in stores and stuff like that. So if this is something that you're interested in, either for yourself, getting for your kids, getting for a loved one, uh, for the holidays or something like that, I don't think you should have too big of an issue getting them. Uh, the price proposition is really, really solid. Within this, you get three games, but it's, it's closer to two and a half. Let me explain. Uh, you got the original Super Mario Brothers. You get Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Level again, which was the original Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan. Uh, we got a re-skinned version of a game called Doki Doki Panic that served as uh, Mario 2 over here, and then also you get the classic game Ball that was originally on the Game and Watch. Uh, and yeah, both uh, all three of the games are very faithfully uh, reconstructed. So you get you know two and a half, three games there. Uh, not too bad at all. I did spend a decent amount of time playing this. Um, it's been, you know, a couple of days since I've touched it. Uh, but again, this is something that I would recommend, obviously, predominantly for collection purposes. And that is what justified the price proposition for me. So um, this makes more sense as a collector's item and in collector's utility rather than actually being a practically used uh, game device. Uh, not that you can't game on this. I, I put in a couple minutes of uh, Mario. I played, you know, multiple rounds of ball, uh, making it well into the hundreds. Um, so, like, it, it's something you could absolutely just sit there and play. But is it the most efficient way to probably go about playing Super Mario Brothers? Definitely not. Um, again, it looks beautiful on the screen, but it, it's very, it's a very constrained cramped feeling actually playing it for it uh, long term unless you're using warp pipes to go to the later levels really early on uh, actually working your way through the game is really really cramped 
Um, but genuinely speaking, I think it actually is able to like capture where you leave off and stuff like that too, from what I understand, because I kind of like jumped back into games and left where I went. But I don't think they have anything like save states or anything like that. Um, but yeah, like this is kind of like a collector's impulse buy. Uh, makes all the sense in the world. It's a great display piece. It's a great little thing you could show off to your friends and come over and be like, hey, look at this thing. Um, but for what it seems like, uh, this and Zelda Age of Calamity seems to be Nintendo's main offerings for this holiday season. And something like this being a main hol holiday offering is very interesting. Uh, this, to me, probably doesn't have the most mainstream appeal in the world. I think there's probably going to be a lot of parents who be like, oh, a little hand uh, Nintendo handheld, a little Mario handheld, let me get this for my kid. And I I'm sure some kids will get a, a kick out of it, but this is definitely something that I think resonated a lot, obviously, in the, the 80s, the early 80s when it came to the late 70s. Um, and I don't know how much, you know, kids are going to love this in the, this age of Fortnite. I don't know how much, you know, appeal it's going to have to them uh, nowadays. But again, Older people who were either had a game and watch, who loved themselves some Mario Brothers, or who can collect everything Nintendo, it makes all the sense in the world. Pick this up, fifty dollars, not too crazy. Really solid build, uh, something I'm glad to have. And again, because of that kind of timed exclusivity, there's a lot of resale potential too. If you're in that game, if uh, if you know in uh, two years, three years, you plan on offloading a lot of your game consoles, see if you can make a little profit. I think this is not a bad investment to make now. Uh, I don't expect you know seeing you clear you know five hundred dollars on this thing but retailing at 50 and the fact that retail eventually is going to go down and because you know naturally they're not going to produce anymore in two three years when some people are like hey i want this console but nintendo's no longer selling it that's kind of your opportunity to maybe get a couple bucks on this uh, but again i'm not encouraging anything like scalping or anything like that uh but again there there is collection potential in this there is resale potential in this and I, i'm really really happy with this device so for me if you're a collector if you really really love nintendo this is an absolute thumbs up for me get this uh pick this up now it's not a major investment if you're tight for cash there's obviously probably better ways you can use your fifty dollars but for me this is a, a no-brainer but again if you're looking for something maybe as like a gift for something that you actually that person plans on playing something, they, this might not be the, the best sell. Uh, but if you have any questions uh, for me related to this device at all, leave it in the comments section down below. Let me know what you thought. If there's any critiques, support, whatever you want, let me know down below. I love talking to you guys. Until next time, this is Jabrell from Neo Vintage Games. Love you guys.